Hello, and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to talk about red, green, blue LEDs, or more commonly called RGB LEDs, and specifically we're going to talk about the common cathode type. Now if you have no idea what the heck that just meant, don't worry about it, we're going to talk about it a little bit. So by the end of this tutorial, you're going to have a solid understanding of how to hook up the RGBs, to you using your Arduino and you'll also know some cool ways to go about lighting them up either as discrete colors like you can make it red green or blue or you can start mixing some really neat hues together so let's go ahead and jump right in so let's take a look at this RGB LED and again I have the common cathode type now an LED like any diode has a polarity so that means there's a positive side and a negative side and the positive side needs hooked up to the positive voltage and the negative side needs hooked up to the negative voltage or the less positive voltage. So for our application when we hook this up to our in Arduino the output pins that we use the digital pins that's our positive voltage and the negative voltage is going to be ground. Now the positive side of a diode is called an anode and the negative side is called a cathode and Normally, when you work with just, you know, regular old LED, the short leg is the cathode. But here, with this LED, with this common cathode RGB LED, it's actually the long leg that is the cathode. So when we hook this up, the long leg needs to go into ground. The short legs are what we're going to hook up to the digital pins, and those allow us to independently control the amount of red, green, and blue light that is going to be emitted from this diode. Starting from left to right, the leftmost pin is the red, going to control the red light. Next pin over, that long pin, is the common cathode. Again, that's the longest pin on this LED. The next one right is going to control amount of green. And then finally, the furthest right is going to control the amount of blue. So all we have to do is hook up the digital pins to those colors and then hook up the common cathode to ground and we can pretty much start mixing colors or we can independently turn on colors. That's pretty, it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. So let's take a look inside the dome of that LED. What we actually see is three separate LEDs that have just been kind of smushed into one casing and that's essentially what this is. So we have an independent red you know, LED light that's gonna light up, an independent green one and an independent blue one and it's when all of those turn on together in different amounts is how we get different colors and different hues to come out of this RGB LED. Now alternately we can just light up the red one and keep the green and the blue uh, not turned on and we'll just see red or you know we could do the same thing for the green and the blue respectively. Essentially you know these are little semiconductor chips in there based on the material that they use to create that semiconductor is what is determining the type of light that you're going to see out of that chip. Well let's take a look at setting up the circuit now. So I've got my Arduino board here and I've got a breadboard and I have the common cathode RGB LED placed into the breadboard. Now I've got the cathode, that common cathode, placed into the ground rail on the breadboard. And then I've got the red lead connected to digital pin 3, the green lead connected to pin 5, and the blue lead connected to pin 6. And then what I've done is I've connected the ground on the breadboard to the ground on the Arduino. Now I've also added a potentiometer to the circuit. And to set up the potentiometer, I just have the leftmost pin hooked up to 5 volts, the rightmost pin hooked into the ground on the breadboard, which you know then hooks up into the Arduino ground, and then I've got analog pin A0 hooked up to the middle pin. So now let's jump to the sketch and see what interesting stuff we can do with this. So here we are in the Arduino IDE, and what I'm going to do is go to File, Examples, basics, bare minimum, and I'm just going to use this bare minimum. It gives me a void setup and a void loop. I'm going to use this as a starting point for writing this program. So the first thing I need to do if I want to turn on the different colors of this LED, first thing I need to do is get some variables that I will use for the pin numbers that uh, I've got hooked up on my Arduino board. So I'll go ahead and do that now. 
So I have a variable for the red pin, the green pin, and the blue pin, and I'm using pins 3, 5, and 6. That's easy enough. Now in the setup, what I'm going to do is set the mode of those pins as outputs, because since I'm going to be applying voltage through those digital pins, I need those pins to be outputs. Okay, so, so far let's review what we've done. We've got three variables for the pin numbers, and then in the setup we set the mode of each of those pins as an output. Okay, well let's go down to the loop now. So in the loop, what I want to do first is just show digitally writing each color discreetly. So I want to make this LED shine red, then green, then blue. So to do that, what I need to do is use, I'm going to use the digital write function and turn the pin of the associated color high. I'll delay for a little bit and then I'll turn it off. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's one of the leads set. Let's add the other two leads. So now I turn on the red, and then I turn it off. I turn on the green, wait 500 milliseconds, turn it off, and then turn on the blue, wait a half second, turn it off, and then we just keep repeating that. So let's go ahead, upload this, and take a look at the board. So that's pretty cool. We see that the LED turns red, and then green, and then blue, you know, over and over again. Pretty neat. And then if you look at it, you can kind of see, you know, how the, the light is originating from those different leads. So pretty awesome. Now, uh, this is cool, and the discrete colors can be useful, you know, if, you're, if you've got a different color for a different indication, you know, a different indication, like red means this, green means this, etc. But I think what's more interesting is when we start to blend these colors. And in order to blend these colors, we're going to use a technique called pulse width modulation. You may or may not be familiar with it. If you're not, there's plenty of other tutorials that I've done on a PWM. And what we're going to do is use the analog write function, and we're going to write varying amounts to the different, uh, those different pins, and that basically allows us to create a hue. So let's go ahead and try that out. So the first thing I'm going to do is make three variables that are going to control the amount of red, green, and blue that I want to mesh together to make a new color. Now before I get into, well, how do we know what color we're going to make, I want to go ahead and set up something in the loop. So let's go down to the loop, and I'm going to get rid of these digital writes because we're going to be using analog write, and then we don't want to delay between each write. We actually want them all to write at the same time. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And the amount I want it to write is no longer high or low, but it's going to be the variable that we'll control up here. So for the first one it will be red amount. So I'll go ahead and upload that to the board and then you can see it's kind of like a kind of like a greenish color. So how do I know what number is going to relate to what color? Like what amount of red, green, or blue do I need to make say uh, you know purple? To get the answer to that we can use a hue chart, a RGB hue chart, and it kind of tells you the proportionate amounts. What I did um, is I use a program called Processing. It's another programming language. It's uh, free to download, uh, free open source software. And it, uh, it has a nice little color picker in there that just gives you the RGB. So I'll go ahead and use that again. So this is just uh, Processing. And again, you can just Google a uh, RGB chart and you can get the, the same kind of thing. But this is handy. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select Purple. Okay, so here's purple, and then RGB, it says uh, there's 220 should be red, 21, and then 234. So I'll go ahead and put those in and see if we can produce a purplish color. So I've typed those in, and now I'll go ahead and upload it. Okay, so it's more purplish. Like, I, from here, I can see it pretty well. I don't know how well that will pick up on the video. Uh, it may look the same, but yeah, it's definitely more purple. So this is neat. Now, you know, we've got this static different color. It's not just red, green, or blue. Um, it's this combination, but we want to do a we want to do this dynamically. You know, we didn't hook up that potentiometer just for looks. So let's go ahead and add the potentiometer. The first thing I'm going to do is add a variable for the pin number that I have the potentiometer hooked up at. The next thing I'm going to do is set the mode of that pin as an input. 
and we want that to be an input because we're going to be reading the amount of voltage at that pin and then we are going to take that number map it to a new value and then apply that value to one of the RGB values that way we can change the amount of red green or blue in, in one of them so let's go ahead and do that in the loop so we use the analog read function to read a value at one of the analog pins but we want to assign that reading to a variable so let's do that so now I've declared and initialized a variable called input color and I've set it equal to the output of the analog read function so we'll be adjusting that potentiometer we're gonna that analog read will return a value between 0 and 1023 and then that value is going to be assigned to input color the input color variable now as you know or as you may or may not know the analog write function that we use it can only accept a value between 0 and 255 if we send it something larger than that then you know we can't be sure what analog uh, write is going to do with it so what we need to do is we need to compress the the value of the input color down to a range of 0 and 255 and to do that we're going to use the map function now there's lots of other tutorials that I've made uh, using the map function so I won't get into using it how, how it's used but we'll just go ahead and uh, input it now So what we're doing here is, again, we are reading the value at the potentiometer pin. We're assigning that to the input color variable. And then what we're doing is mapping the input color va variable from its original value, which is the range of 0 to 1,023, and we're compressing that down to a range of 0 to 255. And so the map function is going to take whatever value input color is, and it's going to basically do a proportion. It's going to say, okay, well, let's say the number is 500 that it gets off of the potentiometer pin. Okay, well, it's going to say something like, well, 500 is to the old range as, you know, 125 is to the new range, if that makes sense. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the input color variable and we're going to use that for one of these amounts. So let's do that. So I've simply inputted that input color variable into the range for the analog write function for the red uh, LED. So let's go ahead and upload that. And now what I'm going to do is adjust the potentiometer and see, okay, so you can see I can add more red and I can take red out. So that's pretty cool. As I add more red, it I don't know, it gets more like purplish and then as I, or not purplish, but pinkish, is and then I take it out, it gets uh, like way blue. So that's pretty cool. Why don't we why don't we do this? Why don't we make input color equal to all of those? So we're just going to get rid of these amounts that we specified up here. And we're just going to use input color for all of them. All right, so I uploaded it. And now let me see what happens here. OK, so that's interesting. They're all going equally at the same amount. It's kind of like a greenish, kind of like a greenish color, I guess. That's pretty neat. Okay, so you can imagine there's all types of ways to mess with the analog input. We could easily have three separate potentiometers adjusting the brightness, or maybe we could have a button hooked up, and then you know, as you press the button, it increments the, uh, that input color variable. I hope that you found this tutorial useful, and I hope that you go out and try that challenge. All right, take it easy. Bye.